there was a silvery blue one with long pointed horns snapping and snarling at the wizards on the ground a smooth scaled green one which was writhing and stamping with all its might a red one with an odd fringe of fine gold spikes around its face which was shooting mushroom shaped fire clouds into the air and a gigantic black one more lizard-like than the others, which was nearest to them. At least thirty wizards, seven or eight to each dragon, were attempting to control them, pulling on the chains connected to heavy leather straps around their necks and legs. Mesmerized, Harry looked up high above him and saw the eyes of the black dragon with vertical pupils like a cat's bulging with either fear or rage. He couldn't tell which. It was making a horrible noise, a yowling, screeching scream. Get back there, Hagrid! yelled a wizard near the fence, straining on the chain he was holding. They can shoot fire at a range of twenty feet, you know. I've seen this horn tail do forty. Isn't it beautiful, said Hagrid softly. It's no good, yelled another wizard. Stunning spells on the count of three. Harry saw each of the dragon keepers pull out his wand. Stupefy, they all yelled in unison. And the stunning spells shot into the darkness like fiery rockets bursting in showers of stars on the dragon's scaly hides. Harry watched the dragon nearest to them teeter dangerously on his back legs, its jaws stretched wide in a silent howl. Its nostrils were suddenly devoid of flame, though still smoking. Then, very slowly, it fell. Several tons of sinewy, scaly black dragon hit the ground with a thud that Harry could have sworn made the trees behind him quake. The dragon keepers lowered their wands and walked forward to their fallen charges, each of which was the size of a small hill. They hurried to tighten the chains and fasten them securely to iron pegs, which they forced deep into the ground with their wands. Want a closer look? Hagrid asked Madame Maxime excitedly. The pair of them moved right up to the fence, and Harry followed. The wizard, who warned Hagrid not to come any closer, turned, and Harry realized it, who it was. Charlie Weasley. All right, Hagrid, he panted, coming over to talk. They should be okay now. We put them out with a sleeping draft. Uh, though it might have been better for them to wake up in dark and quiet, but like you saw, they weren't happy. Not happy at all. What breed you got there, Charlie? said Hagrid, gazing at the closest dragon, the black one, with something close to reverence. Its eyes were still just open. Harry could see a strip of gleaming yellow beneath its wrinkled black eyelid. This is a Hungarian horntail, said Charlie. There's a common Welsh green over there, the smaller one, a Swedish short snout, that blue-gray, and a Chinese fireball, that's the red. Charlie looked around. Madame Maxime was strolling away around the hedge, gazing at the stunned dragons. I didn't know you were bringing her, Hagrid, Charlie said, frowning. The champions aren't supposed to know what's coming. She's bound to tell her students, isn't she? Just thought she'd like to see him, shrugged Hagrid, still gazing enraptured at the dragons. Really romantic date, Hagrid, said Charlie, shaking his head. Four, said Hagrid. So it's one for each of the champions, is it? What do they got to do? Fight them? 
Just get past him, I think, said Charlie. We'll be on hand if it, if it gets nasty. Extinguishing spells at the ready. They wanted nesting mothers, I don't know why. But I tell you this, I don't envy the one who gets the horn tail. Vicious thing. Its back end's as dangerous as its front. Look. Charlie pointed toward the horn tail's tail, and Harry saw long bronze-colored spikes protruding along every inch of it. Five of Charlie's fellow keepers staggered up to the horn tail at that moment, carrying a clutch of huge granite gray eggs between them and a blanket. They placed them carefully at the horn tail's side. Hagrid let out a moan of longing. I've got them counted, Hagrid, said Charlie sternly, then said, How's Harry? Fine, said Hagrid. He was still gazing at the eggs. Just hope he's still fine after he's faced this lot, said Charlie grimly, looking out over the dragon's enclosure. I didn't dare tell Mum what he's got to do for the first task. She's already having kittens about it. Charlie imitated his mother's anxious voice. How could they let... Him enter the tournament? He's much too young. I thought they were all safe. I thought there was going to be an age limit. She was in floods after that Daily Prophet, Prophet article about him. He still cries about his parents? Oh, bless him, I never knew. Harry had had enough. Trusting to the fact that Hagrid wouldn't miss him, with the attractions of four dragons and Madame Maxime to occupy him, he turned silently and began to walk away back to the castle. Oh, man. He didn't know whether he was glad he'd seen what was coming or not. Perhaps this way was better. The first shock was over now. Maybe if he'd seen the dragons for the first time on Tuesday, he would have passed out cold in front of the whole school. But maybe he would anyway. He was going to be armed with his wand, which just now felt like nothing more than a narrow strip of wood, against a 50-foot-high, scaly, spike-ridden, fire-breathing dragon. And he had to get past it, with everyone watching. How? Harry sped up, skirting the edge of the forest. He had just under 15 minutes to get back to the fireside and talk to Sirius, and he couldn't remember, ever, wanting to talk to someone more than he did right now. When, without warning, he ran into something very solid. Harry fell backwards, his glasses askew. Clutching the cloak around him, a voice nearby said, Ouch! Who's there? That ouch and the who's there didn't really match, did it? It didn't say it was Karkaroff until much lower I glanced down there. So he probably would have said something like, Ouch! Who's there? Harry hastily checked that the cloak was covering him and lay very still, staring up at the dark outline of the wizard he had hit. He recognized the goatee. It was Karkaroff. Who's there? said Karkaroff again very suspiciously, looking around in the darkness. Harry remained very still and silent. After a minute or so, Karkaroff seemed to decide that he had hit some sort of animal. He was looking around at waist height, as though expecting to see a dog. Then he crept back under the cover of the trees and started to edge forward toward the place where the dragons were. Very slowly and very carefully, Harry got to his feet and set off again as fast as he could without making too much noise, hurrying through the darkness back towards Hogwarts. He had no doubt whatsoever that Kar what Karkaroff was up to. He had sneaked off his ship to try and find out what the first task was going to be. He might even have spotted Hagrid and Madame Maxime heading off around the forest together, 
They were hardly difficult to spot at a distance. And now all Karkaroff had to do was follow the sound of voices, and he, like Madame Maxime, would know what was in store for the champions. By the looks of it, the only champion who would be facing the unknown on Tuesday was Cedric. <laughs>